Today we have, all the way from a, a little country called the United States of America, we have a lady by the name of Maria Scapello. <laughs> Alright, just got some fans in the house. Sure. I don't, I don't really. She's going to be speaking on working and traveling full time with WordPress. She, uh, it's an interesting story actually. Like she, she works for WooThemes currently, uh, remotely in an RV, traveling around the United States. Yeah, I, I, I don't actually read that. Um, she travels in an RV, mm -hmm. an RV, R RV, RV, um, and goes to drink beer. Um, yes. Is that right? Yes. And she does this full time. Yes. And see, that's the thing. It's a bit like isn't it's a lot easier to do that if you you know in an RV cooking. What are you trying to imply? What are you trying to imply that there's some sort of Breaking Bad scenario going on here? <laughs> well, look. I mean, I'm not. I'm just going on what I've read here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to actually quote what okay. she says. She's, okay, look here. It turns out Woo Themes has been a perfect fit for me mm. as over half of the company works remotely with flexible hours. Okay. I know you see, that's fine. Nothing out there. Now, this is the part that looks interesting. <laughs> this allows me to continue my travels in the RV mm. while delivering happiness to all oh. of our customers. <laughs> <laughs> look, I mean, I you that's, that's meth, isn't it? Well, she's, she's selling... She, I think she said she had a method or something in there. So, look, I mean, I don't judge, just... A friend introduced her to RVing, apparently. Don't know what his name was, maybe Walter White, maybe? <laughs> look, I mean, I don't... Mar Maria, you know, whatever you do, that's cool, but just, you know, you've, you've seen the show. You know the consequences. Actions have consequences. Just think about what you do. Stuff's going to catch up with you eventually. <laughs> You're being filmed here today as well. We will have that tape the authorities if you need to. There will be proof. Uh, on the surface, Maria says that she travels around the country uh, visiting over 100 craft breweries, apparently. Beer? Something you like quite a lot, Nick? I do like beer. Mm. What's your favorite beer? Oh, citizen beer, probably. Citizen beer. That's not a joke, it's true. I like citizen beer. I don't probably like to say that. I think so. I'm not getting paid to say that, because you know you have to share those, that money with me if you sing it on stage. This is a partnership. Yeah, well, okay, if we haven't really, I, I'm trying to get a sponsor from Citizen Beer for myself. I see. So, Citizen Beer is great, such a good beer. Maria, you should, you should definitely try Citizen don't, Beer. Don't listen to Maria. Maria uh, runs theroamingpint.com. That's the website where she uh, blogs about beer. And she's also, as we said earlier, working remotely in the RV for Woo Themes. So, uh, I'd like to welcome to the stage. Please give a warm South African welcome. Roger, Roger, just calm down. She's eager. Unbelievable. Yeah. Take it easy now. Just calm down. Okay, yeah. let's try it again. Please welcome to the stage the lady, the dodgy lady from America. Oh, don't, don't say that. Okay. A lady, innocent as will prove guilty. Please welcome from the United States, Maria Scarpello. happiness and it's not in the form of meth. So, thank you for that assumption. The RV is nice. Maybe you guys know it as a caravan. Thank you, Jeff. Before I get started, I just wanted to um, take a chance to thank you for inviting me down to speak with you guys today. Uh, this is my first WordCamp talk, so um, I've always wanted to speak at a word camp, I just never really knew exactly what I could talk about. Uh, so when he approached me and said, hey, would you like to come down and talk about how you travel full time and work with WordPress, I thought, oh, that's great. I know a lot about that, so uh, thanks for the idea, Hugh. I, I really appreciate it. And, um, let me get started. All right, so a common question I get on my travels, where are you from? This is normally a straightforward answer for a lot of people. For me, it's not as easy. Um, an easy answer could be, you know, where I'm from, where I was born. Omaha, Nebraska, in the middle of America. Uh, not the most exciting of places, but some, a place that I spent the majority of my life. My family is still there, uh, but the minute I got the chance to leave Nebraska, I was ready to hit the road. Um, so another answer I could use, where are you from, could also be Lawrence, Kansas. 
Now, the problem with this is when I tell people, even in the United States of America, that I'm from Kansas, they automatically assume that I live on a farm. <laughs> I can assure you this is far from the truth. While there is a lot of farmland and there are a lot of cows, I do not own a farm, nor have I ever lived on a farm. Actually, when I think of Lawrence, Kansas, I think of uh, something like this. So this is the University of Kansas where I went to school. I went there for four years for a graphic design degree, and then I went back for a master's in design management. And this is where my, my friends are, are at. I don't have a home here anymore, but if I did have to consider a place a home, I suppose that could be it. Um, I lived there for 12 years. After school, I got a, a job at a small tech startup, and I really liked the job. I liked the people that I worked with. I liked what I did, but I wasn't really fond of the industry that I was in. And after working there for five years, I thought if I continued down this path, I would be more specialized in this industry, and it wasn't something that I wanted to continue in, so I knew I needed a change. Around this time, I also picked up the four-hour work week from Tim Ferriss, and this really changed my life. There were two key concepts that this book taught me. One, that you didn't have to live a life that everyone else thought you needed to live. A lot of my friends were getting married, buying homes, having kids. This is something that I was necessarily interested in at the time. And the second thing that this taught me was that you could actually develop a life uh, for yourself. And the idea of location independence was something that I hadn't thought of. Um, basically, the way Tim Ferriss talks is that if, as long as you have connectivity, you can work from anywhere. And this is really valuable within the WordPress industry and something that's very applicable. So I thought, well, that's great. I really like this idea. I need a change. So I decided to transform the idea of a home. And that's where the RV comes in. So for the past three years, this has been my home. Um, so when people say, where is your home? Um, this could have been my answer in August 2010. I started from Kansas. And we had a, a pact. We thought, well, let's travel for six months and let's circle the West. It's something that I've always wanted to do. A lot of my friends from school moved away from college and lived in all these cities, San Francisco, Seattle, places I had never visited before. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to visit them in their new hometown and explore the country a little more. I thought at the time that I was looking for a place to settle down, uh, but what I didn't realize was that there was so much more to discover. So then as time evolved, so did my path. So in 2011, I could have considered all of these places my home. And it actually continued on after that. 2012, I found myself the majority on the East Coast, uh, cut across Texas, went down to Florida, all the way up to Maine, cut across to Niagara Falls, and then back down to Key West, all the way south. And then 2013 came along, and I found myself cutting back across the country, and going back to the West Coast, which I actually qu quite prefer. So another definition for home could be uh, home is where you park it, <laughs> or home is where my wheels are. Uh, one of the things I like to say is my home is just right over there. <laughs> People kind of look at me, but uh, before I actually started this trip, I had done quite a bit of European travel. I had been to 14 countries uh, right out of school, and it had been a to more countries than I had states in my own country. So I thought this was a great opportunity to explore home a little bit more. Uh, another thing that I could say, you know, is home is where your family is. Um, so Stanley, the RV is in the background. That's Brian, my boyfriend, and our two dogs, Buddha and Ernie. I'll let you decide which one is which dog. Um, but everywhere I go, I take, I take this group, and this to me is home. Um, so this is really what what I've meant, meant to do in the past three years. I, can, I still remember the first day that, that we hit the road. Uh, we spent a lot of time, about five months, preparing for the road, selling all of our stuff, and downsizing our life. This is one of the most freeing experiences that I've ever had. Um, I can't tell you the excitement that we had that first day that we hit the road. It was a fresh slate. I remember sitting in the passenger seat of the RV, and I had the, the path all mapped out. I knew where I was going going straight to Colorado. And I got on Facebook and I asked my friends, I said, hey, I'm driving through the middle of Kansas. What the heck do you do in the middle of Kansas? Well, within 10 minutes, I had a bunch of suggestions of things I had never heard of. 
So if you ever are interested in where the largest ball of twine built by one community is, you can find that in the Backs Roads, Kansas. Before I started this trip, uh, I had never actually even taken a road trip through the mountains before. So it is true what they say, Kansas is statistically flatter than a pancake. So when you come to Colorado and you see these majestic mountains in the distance, it's really kind of a life-changing experience. Another thing I never had done was gone to a national park before. And, you know, I had heard of Old Faithful, uh, the geyser in Yellowstone that erupts every 10 minutes in this beautiful, steaming, it's awesome. You see the, all these people, they all got their iPads and their iPhones and they're all taking pictures. And you wonder how many people is actually just watching this happen or how many people are actually just filming it. So I had to get the photo off, of course. Um, but there's so many other things at this park that I never even knew about. And I feel kind of silly admitting this, but you know, I, I didn't know things like this existed. This is the Prismatic Springs in the park. And you can kind of see for a little bit of scale, this path down here is where you walk. It, this is the uh, minerals that cause these amazing colors. And it, this isn't the only one in the whole park. There's, there's springs everywhere. This is another view of that. Um, there's mud springs, there's buffalo walking through the middle of the street. You know, they have buffalo traffic jams in the middle of Yellowstone, which is like another, another day there. But things that I had no idea existed. Even within one park, as you're traveling, the scenery changes. So as you go north to the north park, part of the park, this is the Grand Falls. And you stand above this area and you look down at this giant valley and you really start to notice nature a lot more. And it, it really kind of gives you an internal reflection that I really needed at that part of my life. Not only within this one park does the scenery change, but as you go state to state, the scenery changes a ton. Another thing that I never knew. As we circled around Oregon, this was another area that we found. This is called the uh, Painted Hills in Central Oregon. And again, the way the minerals highlight the hills, it, it, it looks tie-dyed. And when you see this in person, you're, you're just awe-inspired by the beauty of the country. You know, another place, if you guys ever get a chance to go to the United States, I highly recommend going to the Grand Canyon. I don't think that there's anything that can match the site that you see. This is from the North Rim. There's two ways to get there. Um, when you stand on top of this grand valley, you see all of this nature and you realize that it just gives you a greater perspective on this earth that we live in and why we're here and what we're doing. Another thing that I really think travel it, it has benefited me at least is the idea of just stopping and taking time to notice the things that happen day to day. The sun rises and sets every single day, but when I was in my typical nine to five, I wasn't taking time to stop and notice these things. And the type of internal reflection that can happen or even just seeing a sunrise. I mean, that's actually really rare for me now. I hardly ever wake up for the sunrise. But when you have this in your back door, <laughs> you wake up at 5 a.m. to see this, and then you go back to sleep. <laughs> Another thing that I think travel is really good for is exposing you to culture. So before I had traveled, I'd never been to the South. And like many people who haven't traveled very often, you might have preconceived notions of a culture or a certain person. So I always thought, you know, the South was full of hicks. They all walked around and said, y'all. Sorry, Brian, from the guard. It's actually, that part's true. They do all say y'all quite a bit. But the thing that I discovered is how friendly and welcoming these people were. Uh, they exposed me to new foods that I never had before. These people didn't know me. We went down during Mardi Gras time. And if you guys have seen any celebrations during Mardi Gras in New Orleans, it's quite a different party than what you'll find in the smaller towns around that, at that area. So this is actually in Thibodeau, Louisiana. And they had the pots and the kettles all set up, cooking the jambalaya, cooking the, the gumbo. Right in the middle here is actually called cracklins. And it's the skin from pigs that they deep fat fry and cover in salt. And it's, a, I guess, a tasty treat. I, maybe not something for me, but it was a, a really cool experience to meet these people and, and find out how friendly they were and realize that some of the preconceived notions you have could be wrong. Uh, another really cool travel experience that I had uh, within the last year is, is when I joined Wu. Part of the interview process was actually, uh, hey, we have a Wu trip coming in a month and we're all going out to Cape Town. Do you think this is something you might be interested in? 
yeah, I think I could probably pencil that in. So I was very fortunate to join the team. And, you know, from Kansas City, we're really into barbecue. We love meat. We have really good barbecue. So when the guys said, yeah, the first night we're all getting together, we're going to do a bry. I was like, bry? What's bry? Well, bry is barbecue. I was like, oh, well, that's fun. That's nice. Thanks for, you know, extending the hospitality. But what I didn't realize is how good you guys can make meat taste. So A.D. Mark and Magnus were all manning the grill, and they put out a huge spread for us. And I'll tell you what, I am from Kansas City, I do love my barbecue, but you guys have something, something good here with your bry. The biltong also is just incredible. Brian hasn't had it yet, but we have to get him some. So when you travel or when you do anything that's against the norm, you're going to have naysayers. You're going to have people that say, well, what if you fail? Or what if it doesn't work out? This has never really been a part of my personal philosophy. I've always felt like, well, if I try it and I don't like it, then I tried it and I don't like it, and now I know. Um, but this fear can hold a lot of people back. And as I was preparing for this talk, there was a TED Talk from a guy named Rick Steves. And his talk was about the value of travel. And one of the quotes that he had really stuck with me. He said, what we fear doing the most is usually what we most need to do. And I think that this is um, very applicable, not only for travel, but just for life in general. One of uh, the guys that I interviewed for this talk, Eric Hitter, works for Automatic. He travels full time right now. He works on Team Custom. But back in 2009, he was an accountant in the government nonprofit industry. And it wasn't really a great time in 2009 to be working for the government in the nonprofit industry in the United States. And unfortunately, he got laid off. Now, the first reaction that might, someone might have when they get laid off is fear. Fear of the unknown. What's going to be next? Well, instead of letting fear control him, Eric decided to confront this and actually hit the road. He uh, had traveled a little bit as a kid, taken some road trips, so he was familiar with the style of travel, but he really had the opportunity to explore what this could have meant for him. He always worked in dev as a, as a hobby, but never really thought that he'd explore it as an actual career. I think like many of you here, he had a friend, needed a website, he knew how to use WordPress, the two came together, and then that kept happening. So as he went along, he um, actually found out about WordCamp in Boston. And since then, he's now, this past year, become the lead organizer for WordCamp Boston. And he's also been to over 27 work camps across the globe. So he's working and traveling. He'll do road trips. He'll do flights. He does a number of different things. Um, but basically took the opportunity to change his life and make it what he wants. One, another point that Rick had made in his topic was resolve to do one thing every day that you fear. I think this is a, another example that I have from WordCamp Atlanta that I attended last year. I met a guy named Kamanzi. And Kamanzi is kind of one of those take control kind of guys. You, you would never think this of him, but when he was 19 years old, he started his own business. And he worked in the, in his, uh, with his business for 12 years. He, like a lot of people, spent all of his time on his business. He wasn't really happy in what he was doing, but it was what he was supposed to be doing. He had a wife, he had kids, but he was found that he was neglecting that side of his life. So he stopped and he said, you know, what is it that would really make me happy? And he had always aspired to be a writer. But he never really thought that that's something that he could do. He let the fear and doubts of what happens if this doesn't work out control him. And one day he decided that, that wasn't how he was going to live. So he actually published a book. Now the interesting thing about this is after he published the book, six months later, he had only sold five copies. So one could take that and say, all right, this wasn't for me. Obviously, no one wants to read my stuff, like Brian said. Everyone's too busy. But he actually took this opportunity to refocus, identify his key audience, do a lot of guest post blogging for other blogs that were also in the same industry, and found out if, you know, what the struggles were that people had. And from this, he's actually now on his second book, and sold over 80,000 copies. 
And he's done all of this with WordPress, the promotion, the blog, reaching out to his audience, and since has been to over, I have to look at my notes so I don't get it wrong, 14 states and 12 countries speaking at WordCamps. So while he's not necessarily a full-time traveler, or wouldn't consider himself a full-time traveler, I would say in the last few years, if you've been to 12 countries and 14 states, you're doing something pretty cool. And he's a, a great motivator. I love his slogan, stop existing, start living. And uh, if you guys ever want to get some motivation, I highly recommend you check out his site. Kind of reminds me of a, another quote that I had found from Oscar Wilde. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist and that is all. I think that's a really powerful quote and it takes a lot to kind of change your life and decide maybe this isn't for me. Maybe the nine to five or the way that everyone else thinks I should live is what I need to do. So if that's you and you're thinking, well, what does it take? What, what do I need to do in order to live this kind of lifestyle? Well, the first thing I would say is it takes a lot of flexibility. Not only flexibility in your job, but flexibility in your personality. You have to be able to roll with the punches. There's a lot of times where you expect to get connection and you don't, or you don't make plans for where you're gonna sleep that night. Well, that maybe it's just me, but. <laughs> You know, a lot of people will say, oh, you're so lucky you work for Woo Themes. They allow you to work remotely, and it's, it's true. I'm very blessed. I couldn't be happier with where I'm at today. But at the same time, if I wasn't working for Woo Themes, I would still be living the life that I'm living. I would still be using WordPress. I'd either be doing freelance design or using WordPress in another way to make money. There's so many different ways to use WordPress to make money, and it, it can all be remote. Another good example of that is the professional hobo. She was a financial advisor that had always dreamed of traveling. And she's figured out a way to transform that dream into a reality. And she actually does uh, financially sustainable travel advice for other people that are looking to travel. So this is another great resource if you guys are interested in this kind of lifestyle. Another good example of this is Cody McKibben. Similar to Eric's story, and maybe many of yours, he had a friend that needed a website, and then the friend's sister needed a website, and then the sister's friend needed a website, and then all of a sudden he was a freelance web designer. Uh, so Cody worked on this for many years. He also picked up the four hour work week back in 2006, and decided that he was gonna put a one year plan in place for him to build his own personal freelance business, and then uh, hit the road. His travel was a bit different. He flew to Thailand, which is a very common place for a lot of full-time travelers to go because it's very um, affordable. So after doing the web design and work for about three years, he started thrillingheroics.com. He actually made a link for you guys specifically for WordCamp references if you'd like to check that out. Um, and over the years, he's helped transition other people into this kind of lifestyle and has also formed the Digital Nomad Academy. So basically he is helping mentor other entrepreneurs that are interested in location independence. Another thing that's really important for this kind of lifestyle is connectivity. Commonly, this is my workspace in the RV. I use a Wi-Fi device through Verizon. I also have AT&T on my phone, so that's kind of a backup. Um, 90% of the country, we're very fortunate in the United States, has connectivity. So uh, I can find myself in a lot of different places working, for example, while we're driving. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but that's a download speed of 22 megs while we're in motion. I think that's quite impressive. I know the guys at the office are lucky if they get a four down. Um, but you know, there's times where you might not have the best connectivity or you just want to get out of the office so you can go work in a cafe. Uh, this is pretty common. Uh, one of my favorite things about this lifestyle is, though, is you can redefine what an office means to you. Um, this is my favorite office. This is down in Key West. Every night, we would uh, drive off the beach. Every morning, we would drive to this spot. I'd hang up my hang hammock and start working, delivering happiness via the computer. <laughs> so anytime you can kind of redefine your office space uh, to be whatever you want, uh, I, I highly recommend it. Another really important aspect of this life is discipline. There's a work-life balance that has to happen. 
And it's not only discipline to work, but it's actually discipline to stop working, um, which is something that you will gain over time with practice. And I would say I'm still not even good at that. And I think a lot of people that work from home probably find the same challenge. Um, if you don't have an office to leave, how do you unplug? How do you shut down? You know, if I'm just sitting in the RV working, how do I not let this cute little guy distract me from my work? You know, he's always wanting attention or wanting to cuddle, and then before I know it, he's in my lap. And I'm really not actually getting much work done at this point, but sometimes you gotta just stop and take a minute to enjoy those things. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from Seth Godin is instead of wondering when your next vacation is, maybe you should set up a life that you don't need to escape from. I think that uh, definitely helped put this in play for myself in the past three years. While it always does seem like I'm on vacation because everywhere I go is new, uh, at the same time, it's, every, it's just another day in the life. You know, I, I have a schedule, I work in the morning, usually through the afternoon, get a couple walks in for the dogs, and if I'm lucky, shut the laptop down by six and then maybe visit a brewery or two. Uh, so for you, what I would say, follow that dream. I talked to Eric and I said, Eric, what kind of advice would you give to people that want to do this kind of lifestyle? And he said, well, you know, it's just, it's not for everyone. Not everyone is going to want to just sell all their stuff and hit the road. But as a way to kind of help get into that, he suggested taking a two week trip somewhere. Uh, ideally, maybe not in your own country, uh, so that you can kind of explore what it means to work from somewhere else and experience the challenges that you would see as you travel and try and work at the same time. He said that if you can kind of get this um, life going, that you can't force it, you have to like the idea. And he said that um, if you're apprehensive, it's gonna, per it's gonna, sorry, excuse me, it's going to impact your productivity and your happiness. So while it's not for everyone, it, it is something that you have to do over time and with practice. One of the um, other sites that I found while researching for my talk was Chris's site. And uh, one of the quotes he had was, if you want to keep getting better, you can't rest on what you already know. And I think this is a really good quote for people in WordPress because I think a lot of people find themselves in this industry based on something that they weren't happy doing or they just kind of fell into it. And you have to push yourself and you have to continue to educate yourself in order to, look to continue to succeed. If you want to keep growing, you have to be willing to step into a space where you don't know anything. I'm sure there's a lot of people in here that were never formally trained as a developer, but ended up picking up PHP and liking it. So as you go about your day and you continue to listen to the talks and press yourself to learn more about the space that you don't know as much as you wish you would, I think it's important to just recognize when you're traveling how you can sit down and, and look at nature and really kind of ground yourself. And when you're traveling and experiencing different cultures, what this can do and how this can open up your eyes to new things. I challenge you to go places that you wanna go and do the things that you wanna do. You know, there's a, a, a lot of stories that can be told of the travels, but uh, I think a lot of people like to focus on the brewery aspect it's just a really great way to meet people. And it's just a, a been an enjoyable way for us to travel and learn more about the locals and the places that we visit. So I encourage you to follow your folly. And if you're not doing anything that you like right now, I'd like you to kind of just sit back and take, take a minute to think about what it would be to make you happy and really challenge yourself to pursue those dreams. So thank you very much. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions about the traveling? Awesome. Your bulldog is amazing. I'm a bulldog. Check it out. Did you check it out? Yeah. His name's Banjo. Aww. It's cute, eh? <laughs> you can see. He's really cute. It's got a similar coloring to you. We should probably talk about this after. Okay, we should. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you for a beer. Yeah, definitely. All right, citizen beer. Everyone had a lot of applause. We've got a question over here. Oh, yeah. So what do you do? Do you design for room That's 
a good question. My official title is the internal community manager, which means I help kind of keep the team going. Uh, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I do support. Um, so I do account pre-sales tickets. If you guys ever have a question about WooCommerce, you most likely talking to me or one of my colleagues. And then I've also, in the past um, year, have been helping implement the dot site changes. So we had uh, Sivan McCowan do a review back in December, and I've been implementing her suggestions through the doc site and the changes that Mike has made. So if you guys ever send in the doc report, that's going to me. Yes. Jayhawks, sorry, I got really excited. That's kind of a Lawrence <laughs> thing, but uh, we're really big basketball fans, and that's a really common statement. So you need to find me later. I owe you a beer. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, guys. I'm sorry. I was really nervous. This is my first time. So hopefully I get better. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. That was pretty flippant awesome.